Welcome to Traco Products and the Traco Model 3000 Automatic Clipper Blade Sharpening Machine. When you receive your machine it will come in three cartons. The large carton will be the fully assembled machine, the second carton will be the honing disc, and the third carton will be the small accessory package with your powder, oil, etc. The way you assemble the honing disc onto the machine, you lift up the two arms, set them back out of the way, take your honing disc and simply drop it onto the spindle, aligning the hole in the disc, put the tapped hole in the spindle below, and insert and tighten the supplied screw. After you've mounted the disc onto the holding machine, we now have to mount a set of blades on our holders. Bring our two blades down with the wheel turned off. Everything's turned off. Now we check the alignment of our holder teeth to the center of the disc. We want to adjust our holders this way so that the teeth of the blade align in a straight line to the center of the wheel. And you can see it does. Same with the cutter. We want the teeth of the cutter to align directly in line with the center of the wheel. You can also check this by putting a piece of string across here. It may be easier to visualize, keeping the string in line with the center of the wheel. Now, that explains how to adjust the holders this way. Now, if you need to adjust the holders in elevation, and that will occur as you get your honing disc resurfaced several times, it will become thinner and thinner. And we want to keep the arms parallel to the top of the honing disc, top surface of the disc. And as the disc becomes thinner, that, that will come out of adjustment. Simple way to adjust it, on each end of this assembly, there is a screw on each end. Loosen the screw, and this whole assembly can go up and down, align the arms so they're parallel to the top of the disc, tighten the screws, and that is set to run. One of the nicest features of this new model machine is the comb holder and the cutter holder are magnetic and they require no gauging to set the, the holders for various sides. Blades, one blade of the Oster A5 style fits all the combs here and the second holder, the cutter holder, fits all the cutters on the Oster A5 style blades. The arms are moved back and forth automatically by means of a gear motor and a cam. You'll notice that the slide mechanism is fully enclosed in rubber booting so no grit can get inside the linear ball bushings. This will give very long life to the unit. The bearings on the pivot points of the unit are all sealed ball bearings so there will be no worry about grit getting into the bearings. That gives you very long life. The machine comes with a built-in brake assembly to slow down the honing disc and bring it to a stop. The honing disc is double-sided honing disc. If you remove the screw and turn the disc over, you will see there's either an H or an F on the disc. H stands for hollow ground, F stands for flat ground. Small animal blades are hollow ground and large animal blades are flat ground. The machine features an extremely high quality Bodine ball bearing motor that drives the honing disc. This motor has a capacitor start which reduces the amount of amperage required when starting the unit up and getting the disc up to speed. In the starting windings of the motor, it only takes 850 watts to bring the disc up to speed and once it's at speed, 200 watts to maintain it. This is very important if you're in a mobile unit and you're running off an inverter off a of DC power. This allows you to use a smaller inverter and give you longer battery life. I'd like to discuss now the flexibility of our Universal Model 3000 comb holder. This will hold all the various size A5 blades. 
easily. The two floating magnets are inserted into the screw holes. And this is a size 40 surgical blade and it will operate and hold the blade for the sharpening process. Now let's say the next blade we want to sharpen is a size 10 blade. Remove the current blade, mount the size 10 blade in the same fashion and it's ready to be sharpened, no adjustments needed. Moving on with various sizes, here is a Andis size 3 and 3 quarter blade and it will mount in the same manner and not require any adjustments. One of the unique features on this machine is it's a two speed machine meaning it has a low RPM to the honing disc and a higher RPM to the honing disc. When the orange belt is on the small motor pulley and the large spindle pulley it will run at the low speed. When the belt is easily moved down to the second pulley where it's on the larger pulley on the motor and the smaller pulley on the spindle it will run at a higher RPM. When the machine is set to the low RPM it will take approximately two minutes to sharpen a blade which will require two thousandths of metal removed. When it's at the high RPM setting it will take approximately one minute to take the same amount of metal off to sharpen the blade. This machine also features a cam that drives the two arms back and forth that hold the cutter and the comb blade and this cam is adjustable. It will come set for the small animal blades like your Oster A5 style blades, your Andis A style blades, etc. There is a second tap hole where you can place the cam in that tap hole and it will now be set for doing the large Stewart animal blades. If you remove the screw you will see there are two holes in the cam. The farthest hole out is for the small animal blades. The second hole closer to the pivot point of the cam is for the large animal blades. Simply place the screw over that hole, tighten the screw and you're all set for doing your Stewart blades. With your machine when you unpack it you will receive an atomizer with honing oil in it. This atomizer is easily filled with air pressure by a bicycle style tire pump or a pump for pumping an automobile tire up. And you can put up to 90 pounds of air pressure in that atomizer and it will work all the way down to 10 pounds of air pressure. You will also receive a jar of honing powder this is a one pound jar and it will do several hundred clipper blades. You receive an applicator for the honing power powder which is basically a salt shaker. The Allen wrench which will adjust all the screws on the machine. Metal removal gauge which will tell you how much metal you removed off the blade in the sharpening process. And a charging stick for when you apply the powder to the honing disc. The operator position when you utilizing the machine and operating it will be the side of the machine with the two switches. The switch on the left will act activate the oscillation of the arms. The switch on the right will turn on the holding disc. To aid in stopping the holding disc, the brake can be pulled on to bring the holding disc to a rapid stop. And again, the switch on the left turn the arms on, which will move the arms back and forth. I'd like to explain how the holders are used to hold the blades. We're going to start with the comb holder and it will say A5 comb blade engraved right on the holder. If this wording is upside down when the arm is in the up position, you will place the holder on the arm upside down. Please correct it so that the wording can be read. The holder features a large magnet here and two floating magnets. We will start with an A5 a size 10 blade and how we attach it, these two magnets that float will mount into the counter bores for the Oster screws. 
and the large magnet will hold it to the brass block. This will set the holder at the correct height for sharpening. Very simple to use. The Oster cutter holder will say Oster cutter on it and it will have two magnets that are shaped like a V on the end and the head of one screw. The head of the screw will fit into the cutout that drives the cutter back and forth when the cutter is on the clipper. The two magnets will fit into the groove that the blade guide rides in. That's how simple it is to mount the, co the co cutter to have it in the, sharp in the correct position for sharpening on the machine. First thing we have to do is pre-charge our honing disc with honing powder. This is easy to do. What we will do is give the wheel a little spin and apply about a one second burst of powder or oil onto the, the disc. Then we will sprinkle our powder and we'll do this five to six times until we get an even gray color to the honing disc. After sprinkling the powder, you take your wooden stick and you just rub the powder into the grooves of the disc. The disc is surfaced with fine grooves in it, similar to a record player finish like you would have on a vinyl record. After applying the powder, we will turn on the wheel, and this is best done in the low speed mode until you get familiar with the machine. Turn on our arms. And with a cutter, with the comb blade only, not the cutter, we we'll lower it down, let it make three, four strokes across the wheel. Slow down your wheel. Apply a short burst of oil. Then we will shake our powder on, making sure you get plenty of powder on the outer edge because that will take the most quantity of it. Spin the wheel and with a wooden charging stick, rub the powder into the groove of the wheel. Place the, start the wheel, start the arms. Let it make three, four strokes. We will do this four to six times until the entire wheel becomes this gray color here and all the shiny aluminum colors are now looking gray. Now that we have completed charging our honing disc, you will see that the honing disc is a uniform gray color all over the surface of the disc. All the shiny locations and areas are now filled in and turned gray. Now I'd like to talk about the powder and oil that will be left on the clipper blades after sharpening. You will notice that the powder residue will be adhered to the blade lightly and what you want to see is a powder residue that will lightly pack together and stay on the blade. If it's dry like sand it will it falls off the blade easily that means you're using not enough oil. If it's wet like grease or toothpaste that means you're using too much oil. Once you start sharpening you will not be applying oil with every blade you'll be just observing the powder residue and when the powder residue starts to dry out you will simply apply oil the next blade you sharpen. And you'll probably go three to five to six blades before you have to apply oil again. You will apply powder with every set of blades you sharpen. That's very important. Always sharpen with fresh powder. All right, now that our disc is fully pre-charged, and you can see it's a uniform gray all over, we're ready to start to sharpen a set of clipper blades. What we will start with is our metal removal gauge. We will take the comb blade, place the two holes for the screws onto the two pins, and hold it up tight to the metal removal gauge. The dial is movable so you can set the zero on the dial to the needle. 
each line on this dial is one thousandths of an inch. You want to be able to take two thousandths off the blade, which will mean after sharpening, we should be two lines away from the zero minimum. We'll place the comb blade on the comb holder by placing the two floating magnets into the counter bores for the screws. We place the cutter blade on the cutter holder by placing the magnets in the slot that the blade glide rides in. Now we apply a slight amount of powder with every blade we sharpen. Take our charging stick, rub that into the wheel. We're ready to start. We'll bring down our cone blade. We'll bring down our cutter blade. See there's some sparking, especially at the outer edge of the wheel. This is normal. This is from the abrasive powder. We are on the slow speed setting. On the high speed setting, you will see more sparking. After two minutes, we lift our arms up. I always try to lift halfway between the inner edge and the outer edge. sharpening, you will see that there will be a residue left on the comb and the cutter blade. We're going to look at the residue on the comb blade. The residue should have enough moisture to it that, that it will adhere to the blade on its own. If it falls off like it's too dry like sand, that means you're not using sufficient oil. If it's wet like toothpaste or grease, you're applying too much oil. If you over applied the oil, Simply go two, three, four blades with applying no oil, powder only, until you get the proper consistency. Now we're going to brush the powder residue off the comb blade so we can measure it again. It's important it not to have powder on it or it's going to give us a bad reading. We'll remount it. And we will read our dial. And I'm about one and a half lines from zero, so I took a thou and a half off, which is sufficient, although two thou is probably a preferred reading. If I would have sharpened it the full two minutes, you would have seen the two thou metal removal. Okay, now we must wash our blade before we can reassemble it. And what I have here are two small containers, and they have kerosene in them. And we're just going to wash the blade clean to remove any residue from the honing powder. Then we're going to dip it again in the second one as a rinse. We'll dry it off. Do not use soap and water as that will corrode the blade. Must use some type of a petroleum type product to prevent corrosion. We'll repeat the process on the cutter. We're ready to reassemble that blade set. Now that we have washed our cutter and our comb and we are ready for reassembly, the first step will be to check our spring tension. This is the spring of the blade that holds the two blades together and this is the socket. The spring tension is adjusted by this piece that's horseshoe shaped by squeezing it closed a small amount with a normal pair of pliers. and we'll repeat the process to the other side. You only need to close it a small amount. You still want the socket to freely pass through. If the socket will not pass through, then you've overclosed it and you will have to pry it open with a screwdriver. The next step is we will have to lubricate our blade before assembling. Place two drops to three drops of oil on the blade and I place them at the, teeth, at the teeth, 
and on the runner in the back. We'll place our cutter on top. We'll place our blade guide spring and socket on top of that. Now we will turn it over, insert the two screws, Now we need to align the blade set. We want the cutter and comb parallel at the teeth. And what that means, we want the points of the cutter teeth to be set back from the comb teeth the same amount on both ends. You never want the point of the cutter teeth extending beyond the comb otherwise the points will be able to catch the skin of the person or animal and that is dangerous. So you always want the, comb, the cutter teeth set slightly back from the top of the from the front of the comb teeth. This amount varies with the size of the blade. A very fine blade like a number 40 surgical blade, it will be set back ever so slightly about a 64th of an inch. On a large blade like a number 4 blade, it will be set back considerably more close closer to a 32nd to a 16th of an inch. After you have that set correctly, you can finish tightening the two screws to lock them down. We are now ready to test run our blade and generate a wear pattern. Okay, now we are ready to test our blade on the electric clipper to generate a wear pattern. So we will place the blade on the clipper, snap it on, and now we're going to let it run for 30 seconds or so while it generates a wear pattern. After running on the electric clipper, we will slide the cutter out of the comb, and we will be looking at the teeth of the comb. What we will see will be wear marks going back and forth from the cutter rubbing against the comb. What you want to see on these wear marks is uniformity on every tooth of the comb. If you see any areas where the wear marks fade away, that will indicate that that blade is going to pull fur and not cut correctly. That could be caused from not sharpening a sufficient length of time, in time your honing disc will wear and you will start to see that condition occur and at that point you have to have your honing disc resurfaced. The next step will be actual test cutting the blade. We test the blade on a rabbit pelt. The reason we select a rabbit pelt is the rabbit fur is extremely fine and it's one of the most difficult furs for the blade to cut. As you can see, the blade easily cuts through the fur. That blade is sharp and ready to go back to the customer. Now for efficiency, what most people do is they, once they start sharpening a set of blades, while the machine is cycling, they disassemble the next set they're going to sharpen, and they wash and reassemble the prior set they did sharpen. So by the time they have washed the next set, assembled the set they have already sharpened, the two minute cycle will be over and they will be ready to remove the blades, apply some powder and start a new set of blades. However, if you are operating on high speed, you only have about one minute to do all of that function in, unless you have two people doing it, one assembling and one just operating the machine. 
It also varies depending on the dexterity of the person. Some people can reassemble blades very quickly, while others take longer. This will come with, with practice and experience. You will become much faster at reassembling them. So we recommend that you start at the low speed setting, and when you're comfortable, try the high speed setting and see if that is adequate for you or if it's too fast.